Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Renwick. Berto is your host. Thank you so kindly for being a part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Brother Rodnen, what is the matter with your leg? My leg is killing me today. Set up a doctor's appointment for tomorrow. I'm a bit distracted right now. Meeting, updating a previously mentioned story. What the F is wrong with Texas Governor Abbott, he's sending people out in the cold on a political stunt again. And remember yesterday, we kind of covered that when we spoke about the difference between Republican cruelty and competence. Cruelty and competence. And since you mentioned that, I want to go ahead and play that again for you. But before I do that, I want to welcome aboard, welcome aboard, E2247. How are you doing today, my brother? Michael Rudnan is in the house, pain and all, with all the pain in his leg, but he's here. The wonderful and beautiful Bridge MCP is here, as well as is Lee Grant. Lee Grant is in the house. May Wood is in the house. We also have uh, with us the wonderful, beautiful union activist, Yvette Avery Herod. How are you doing, Yvette? Great to see you here. Anyhow, let's go ahead and get started quickly. I have uh, three videos for you guys today. First, uh, first, I want to start with Business Insider White House from Rudden. My White House condemns Texas governor after migrants were dropped off outside Kamala Harris' house. Abbott abandoned children on the side of the road in below freezing temperatures. Imagine that. This is a party of life. This is a party that really supports life. But they drop kids off in the coal, risking their lives. White House uh, condemned Governor Abbott for Texas after busloads of migrants were repeatedly dropped off outside Vice President Kamara Harris' residence in Washington, D.C. on one of the coldest Christmas Eves on record in the nation's capital. Democrats have blamed the situation on Abbott, who since April has bused migrants from Texas to major Democratic-led cities, including Washington, New York, Chicago, and Philadelphia. Amy Fisher, an organizer with the Migrant Solidarity Mutual Aid Network said it really does show the cruelty behind Governor Abbott and his instant, insist, insistence on continuing to bus people here without care about people arriving late at night on Christmas Eve when the weather is so cold. People are getting off the buses. They don't have coats. They don't have clothes for things kind of weather, for this kind of weather. And they are freezing. And you know what I want to do, guys? I did a piece yesterday, and many, many of you may not have seen it. The title of it was Cruelty Versus Competent Humanity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that now, and then I'll continue. But I want you guys to see this because it was a good one. Cruelty Versus Competence. Today, uh, Mike Barnacle on MSNBC had a prescient statement that I think everybody needs to listen to. I mean, it, it encapsulates the difference between what Biden is doing and what the Republican Party leadership is pushing. Check this out, and then we'll take it on the other side. Police, a uh, little truth in packaging here. I know the president. I like the president. That is a very significant list of accomplishments that were just listed by you and Jonathan. And I think right now the principal goal of the Biden administration is to survive the onslaught of uh, investigations and counterattacks from the incoming Republican majority. But at the end of the day, he does all of this. He gets all of this done in addition, in addition to holding together a coalition fighting Russia in Ukraine. That, that's, those are two incredible accomplishments by the President of the United States. And, and figure out this thing. On the other side of the aisle, and we just referred to it, one of the potentially leading Republican candidates perhaps for President of the United States, the existing governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, who once presided over true incompetence in Texas and allowed the power grid to fail during the course of a very cold winter a few years ago, his idea of achievement is to bus people to, to Washington, D.C. in freezing weather and risk their lives standing outside the vice president's home, uh, the vice presidential mansion on, on Massachusetts Avenue in Washington, D.C. That, that's what we're talking about here. We're, we're talking about cruelty versus competence. The Republican proven cruelty and the president's proven competence. So, folks, again, again, it is cruelty versus competence. Competence. 
cruelty versus competence. And it is difficult as hell when you have a party whose base tenets is based on cruelty. When it comes to not giving health care to those who need health care, health care that's already paid for, cruelty. When it comes to not giving the uh, given to mothers and fathers the ability to have family leave so that they can get a job that pays them well, cruelty. When it comes to not being able to have just family leave so that if something goes on in your family, you know that you've, you haven't lost your job or you know that you will be able to be held whole, cruelty. We can go policy after policy after policy, which Republicans stand against. Student loans, forgiveness of student loans after the banking industry has pilfered them decade after decade. Cruelty. So let's be clear here. The, the, the things that progressives, the things that even Democrats in general want to do for our American people, for American brethren, from all of our American brothers and sisters, are things that show competence, things that show humanity. The policies generally supported by the Republican leadership, and in that regards then by Republicans, given that they, uh, as, we, as I've spoken about, psychopaths have a tendency to be followed. The things that they support is born in cruelty. The way they handle the immigration crisis, cruelty. I mean, you just, the way they take, talk about women being able to have control of their own bodies when things are not the way that they should be, cruelty. The way they handle voting rights and who can vote and when you can vote, cruelty. So uh, that theme, cruelty, versus competence is prescient. And I wish more of us would remember to use it in that context. Cruelty versus competent humanity. Absolutely so. Anyway, welcome aboard Melanie Keelan. Welcome aboard Vincent Trudelli. Welcome aboard Lee Grant. Welcome aboard Alistair Waters. How are you doing, my dear friend? I think I saluted Maywood and E2247 already. If anybody I miss, throw your name in the bottom of the queue and I'll be sure to call you out. And this coming from a man in a wheelchair, still no empathy. Let me tell you worse about that. Uh, he went, to, he collected millions of dollars when that tree fell on him in Houston, Tech. I think it was Houston, Texas. And after he's collected and after he's used the legal system, now he has gotten laws passed that prevent others who go through the same accident that he went through with a tree falling on him where they sued the, the property owner or something like that. Now, somebody who went through the same thing that he went through would not be able to get the amount of money that he's getting on a monthly basis. He still gets a huge monthly stipend from having been crippled by a tree. Look it up. It's a shame how these guys uh, operate. All right, Michael Rodney says, New York Times, man sentenced in 16 years, uh, of 60 to 16 years in prison for plotting to kidnap Michigan's governor, uh, jurors convicted Adam Fox of scheming to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer in 2020 in what federal prosecutors describe as a threat to the American democracy. Federal prosecutors said in sentencing memo, the conspirators might easily have killed the governor in a botched kidnapping, killed unsuspecting law enforcement uh, during a traffic stop, or other unsuspected encounter or blown up innocent bystanders with negligible, uh, negligent construct constructed bomb. That is a shame, but that is what that's what that's what these people do. These right wing, uh, according to, you, you heard, well, you'll hear what they're, they're referred to. Last week I asked from E2247, last week I asked PDR Posse, return to Kosovo? Will that distract U.S. from Ukraine? Now I ask again, return to Kosovo? Nope. A flare up in the Balkan Serbian army has been placed on the highest combat readiness level, according to Serbia's defense minister, amid escalating tensions between Serbia and Kosovo. And I think that has to do with Nevgorno Karabakh as well. Not sure. I think so. But 
Next item. Serbian president and military CNC Alexander Vucic ordered Serb armed forces the highest level of combat readiness. And let's see what else we got here. Bridge Brigade is ready to intervene if attack on Serbs in northern Kosovo and in Metohija, the region uh, con con covering southern 35% of Kosovo's total area. Yesterday, Kosovo police at Medcare administered crossing, refused Kosovo entry to Serbian Orthodox Church Patriarch uh, Paralija. I don't know who that is. So uh, I get the point that we have issues in Serbia. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Coming down, I'm scrolling down before I go to the next video. Uh, Michael Rodnes Alberto yesterday, not sure if we knew that Governor Abbott was responsible. Uh, he's responsible, all right. Governor, yeah, but you're right. We weren't sure if he's responsible. But all of this policy, whether he directed this particular one or not, it's his policy of hate. Lee Grant says Kamala wouldn't take them in. That's not true. Uh, that Again, we're talking policy versus reality, Lee Grant. Uh, there, you know, the, the, the person that had the immigration policy that many of us abhor and we spoke out against it was when Obama was deporting people left and right. But he had the best, the least amount of people coming over after he got that job done. And not even that was enough to convince Republicans to have an all-encompassing bill. We need to look at reality for what it is, my brothers and sisters. Lee Grant, you have to look at things the way they really are and not what they're pumping in your mind from the spineless, uh, what I call murdering Fox News, Newsmax, and OAN. The policies that they put out there, the things that they support, the things that they allow their airwaves to be used for, hurt people, kill people. And those people who inflict pain on others, in my humble opinion, should be considered murderers. Anyhow, continuing with the program, uh, we have war ends when there is no hope of radical increase in military power and when foreign intervention is impossible. In World War II, UK preserved knowing it could not defeat Germany, but reasonably expected US intervention. Good point, EE2247. Uh, what else we have here? Vincent Trudelli says, replying to Lee Grant, you would turn away Jesus himself? Come on, so stop. The, uh, Lee Grant wouldn't turn away Jesus. Like I said, most people are good people. The problem is what too many of us, some knowingly sometimes, unknowingly sometimes, buy the Kool-Aid that's put out by psychopaths. And we have to be careful of the psychopaths of all stripes. Neoliberals, we have the neoliberal psychopaths and we have the right-wing psychopaths. We have to be clear of them all. Uh, let's see, Lee Grant says Biden equal competence. Actually, yeah. If you take a look at the amount of policies that Biden got passed in a Congress that was really anathema to the policies uh, he was forced to support, yeah, Biden is very, very competent. And I am not a Biden fan. And I'm going to tell you straight up, Biden is very, very competent. Uh, E2247 MIT Climate Portal, Greenhouse Gases. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see what else we got. We are speaking of Abbott, not Biden. That's true, but I think he was, I also spoke about the competence of Biden. Uh, let's see what else we got here. John Cotter is in the house. He says, the activist got us just kept Title 42 in place. They're doing what they were put there to do. Wow. But you know what? It's interesting by keeping um, 42 in place, they're keeping people out, right? But that, that is what the Republicans wanted. So let's see what they're going to say now. Lee Grant says, Jesus is just all right with me. Of course he is. Uh, Vincent Trudelli says, such a shame that there are people who willingly gave up their very humanity to follow Trump, that they would do anything and everything that he says as if he is Jesus himself. I wonder if it finally stops if Trump told them all to cause harm to themselves. No, they'll probably cause harm to themselves. Let me tell you what's interesting, right? It's, a, you know, I think, I think the good thing that Trump has demonstrated to, to us, specifically Gen Zs, Gen Xs, Gen, uh, Gen, Gen Ys, I think he've already, they, he have showed and exposed evangelicals for what they are, a fraud. And I'm talking about the leadership, of course. Evangelical leadership are a grand fraud 
that we have them sleeping with prostitutes and trying to preach the word, that we have them supporting Donald Trump and trying to preach the word, that they have done, that they are in support of Donald Trump, who has spoken about holding on to women's you know what and raping women and all these kinds of things, that they've done all these things and they're still supporting these folks, including the ministers that have raped, the ministers that have uh, committed all these, these utter things onto to other women. Uh, 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 th- it, it proves exactly that they are a bankrupt religion, right? And you know what? That's why they're losing people. That's why all these evangelical religions are losing people. They're begging and trying to do whatever they can to get more people, but they can't. And the reason they can't is because they're evil. Uh, Breach says, Egberto Willis, Trump didn't start the fire. These people have always been here. He just let them uh, be themselves. That is the magic. I always speak about Donald Trump giving them the uh, impetus, giving them the license, giving them the ability, making evil vogue, making cruelty vogue. That's what Donald Trump did for uh, the, the people that have always been there of that form. The same people that came out in attack that felt it was okay to attack uh, Obama. Let me show you how silly. You remember the birther movement, right? Here's the funny thing. Everybody 100% accepted that Obama's mother was this, uh, 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 this white woman from Kansas. Everybody accepted that. But they wanted to say he was born in, 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 in Uganda or, or born in, in Kenya. And they wanted to say that he was either uh, and somehow maybe in Malaysia or one of these other things. And the media allowed this story to go on. But here is the thing that bugs me the most. They've accepted that, that Obama's mother was this woman from Kansas. That should have been the end of the story. His mother was an American from Kansas. So whether he was born in China, whether he was born in Kenya, whether he was born in Malaysia would not have made a difference because his mother was a born American citizen. Now, let's take a look at Mr. Cruz. Senator Cruz, dad is Cuban. His mother is American, but he was born in Canada. Uh, do, you see the, the, do you see the insanity? But what is worse is not that the right wing is insane, because we understand that. We understand that the leadership of the right wing is insane, and in doing so, their followers, their sycophants, became a part of it. But that we had a media that didn't shut the story down immediately that said, if you accept that Obama's mother is, the, is, is that white woman from Kansas and he was raised by his white grandmother and grandfather, you, it's not possible for Obama not to be eligible for the presidency because under the law, he's considered a natural born citizen. And no, uh, Mr. McCain was not born in Guam. Mr. McCain was born in my country. Mr. McCain was born in my hospital, Cocosolo Hospital in Panama. And that's exactly where I was born as well. My parents were Panamanians, but his parents were Americans, and thus he qualified to, to be president of the United States, even though he was born in my country. Think about that. I could not be president of the United States because I am not a natural born citizen. I'm a Panamanian who naturalized to being an American citizen. So that's the only office in this country that I cannot have. President of the United States. It is amazing. Welcome aboard Holy City 2012. John Carter said, unfortunately, the media enable all that nonsense just to get views. Exactly. You are absolutely right. John Carter also said, sadly, it is all about being mean to the immigrants, to women, to POC, to the needing of health care. Absolutely. Alistair Waters says, the right media is on their knees saying, all hail Mary to the mighty dollar. And we also have... Uh, Lee Grant, who says, Obama's mother was a swirler. I don't know what a swirler is, but what I do know is she was an educated woman. I think, if I recall correctly, a PhD in something. Uh, what else have we got here before I continue? 
Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver, para ver si olvidé algo before I go to the first or to the second video. Daniel Ledo says, yes, I can say without shame, I want to keep people out. And you should get out because you are a foreigner to this land, Mr. Uh, Ledo. Uh, and, and, and look at your, even your last name, right? Ledo, you're a French origin. You don't belong here. You you're stole the land, Okay. Do you want to go, go back that way? Do you want the natives to just come and kick you off the land that you stole? Come on now, let's get real. Uh, continuing, uh, let's see what we got here. What we got here. Uh, Daniel Ledo also said, yes, my group is American. No, your group isn't American. You're French. All right, let's see. He was black, period. <laughs> exactly. John Carter said, so what office are you running for? Uh, I'm sorry, my dear, my dear friend. I will not be running. I am too old to run right now. I am leaving it up for guys like John Cotter, who has done the work, who I admire so much. You are, I mean, you know what, John? The, the last time I saw you, man, I, the, I saw you in that parking lot directing traffic on how to keep Harris County. And you were instrumental in keeping Harris County. You actually looked like a congressman while you were out there directing traffic as far as we're going to do this, we're going to do this. And uh, by now, a lot of us have saw, seen your speeches that you've given out there while you guys were directing that. So John Cotter, hey, folks, line up John Cotter to be the next congressman from our district, okay? All right, let's continue. Michael Rodnan says, Daniel, uh, your group is a small subset of America, or do you consider the liberals and progressives in that chat part of your group? Alistair Waters says, I wonder what Daniel Ledo thinks the definition of American is. I have no clue, Egberto. Willis Swirler, somebody who dates outside of their race, so that tells you something. Now, Lee Grant, do you have problems with people dating outside of their pigmentation? There's no such thing really as race, okay? Uh, the fact that uh, I could probably give you a kidney and your brother couldn't, should, should settle that. I, I printed a story on that. Trying to get all the people with racial... It, look, let me tell you why I give all of my racists here. Uh, all, let me tell you why I give all my racists that, that I have here uh, away, okay? And, and this is the reason why. Um, I understand deep inside of my heart, in my soul, that race is a stupid thing that's used to divide people. Now, a lot of folks in the chat or whatever may not feel that way. But race is the most ridiculously stupid delineation bar none. But I have to talk about it. I got to discuss it because we live in a racialized society and most people have bought the Kool-Aid. Most people have allowed themselves to be dragged into that stupid thing called race. It is stupid. Yes, if he's from, he may be from Louisiana, but go back further. Ledo, French. Ledo, French. Unless it's by, well, whatever the case is, the bottom line is Ledo, French. He doesn't belong here. He needs to go back to France. Now, you see how stupid I sound saying that, Daniel? You are a bona fide American like I am. You are no better or worse American than I am. And we all owe allegiance to the original inhabitants of this land, the indigenous people. So get off your high horse about keeping them out. If I, I want to have a control border in, in just, just so that we can maintain order and not have terrorism and all that kind of stuff, being able to just walk right through. But I'd say anybody that is able to put their foot on this land and be productive on this land, there's no deportation that I believe in. They have just as much right to be here as I do, as you do, as anyone in here does. That is my stance on this, and I stand by it, and I would defend it to kingdom come. And anybody who opposes that, I would remind them that the only people who have, who have license to this land are those who've been here for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Remember that. All right. Let's go ahead and get our first video. Our first video is one, it's a, a replay that I did from my show yesterday at KPFT that I thought was pretty cool. And it has to do with 
a double standard. And it was Ray, one of our listeners, both here and otherwise, to do it. So let's check it out. I lost my friendship with my best friend of over 35 years because right. he was a huge Trump backer. And right. it's hard to uh, get anyone to listen to reason. Let me tell you something about losing your friend. Um, and this is what I told a friend, a good friend of mine that was about to dump me because they were Trumpists. Okay. I told them, I am not willing to lose you over a politician who cares about neither one of us. So uh, I am not willing to lose our friendship because of a politician that doesn't care about either one of us. So I looked at him and I said, I'll take the crap from you. Okay. I'll let you go on and say whatever you want. And uh, all I ask, listen to me sometimes, but I am not, our friendship is going to remain. And uh, it worked. I don't think it'll going to work with everybody, but if that's somebody you care about, brother, do it. Because I tell you what, we can't. Well, it, it, it might have worked, except that, uh, you know, we live a long ways away. Got you. I'm in Houston. He's in Alaska. Got you. You know, but uh, we, you know, we were friends back in Arizona and stuff like that. So yeah. if I maybe face to face, I might have been able to convince him. But right. You know, just uh, texting back and forth. But I tell you something else to do, though, Ryan. Every so often, don't expect a response. But if you still have a number, a a, a text number or whatever, send him a positive affirmation and look at him and say, we should never let a politician get between us. And don't expect anything out of that. But that is going to be inculcated in his mind or her mind. I don't know what it is. Okay. I think that's great advice. Yeah. I mean, that'll be in their mind. We can't let politicians split us up because they don't give a damn. That's the truth. Right. They don't care. They don't know who we are. So why allow them to do that? You've had a great relationship with these guys for decades and a politician come and break you up. Hell no. Yes. Hell no. But anyway, I got to go to one more call, Ryan. And uh, so thank you so kindly for calling my brother. All right. Thanks a lot. We t- okay. Daniel says, I, I hope you like that. But the, the, the gist of that whole thing is we should never let politicians create friction among us people. It is ridiculous. Daniel says, so do Egberto standard, the Jews have claimed to Israel. They lived there for thousands and thousands of years. And so did the Palestinians. They all shared the land. You know, it is, it is amazing. We, we ought to remember also that uh, the Jews were enslaved in Egypt and went over to the land of milk and honey. And according to their, uh, their, 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 their holy book, God says, go take over this land, kill every man, woman, and child and take the land. You know, I, look, I, I, I think all of this stuff about religion uh, it, is problematic. But uh, again, if, if we were to look and see who should be in Israel, it's both of them. Both people are of the land. They're cousins after all. Anyhow, taking a look at um, what Bridge MCP wants me to put on the screen. Here we go. It says, I've heard the rhetoric from both sides. Time to do my own research on the real truth. So you go to Google. Literally the first link that agrees with what you already believe. Jackpot. That is so true. I don't look for the first link that agree with me. I read the, the first few links, see what it has to say. And I continue researching because right now with SEO, search engine optimization, what a lot of, uh, a lot of right-wingers have is enough money to hire a lot of SEO uh, reps, uh, uh, search engine optimizers to go in there and make sure that they put the right keywords in the right places to put your, so that when Google does its search, the bad stuff gets to the top of the chain. And then for anybody who doesn't want to do real research, for those who are generally lazy, etc., they get that bad information and that's what they put out there. So no, eso no es cierto. Eso es lo que no es algo que vamos a hacer. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, para ver, para ver, before I go to the other one. So, Egberto, no, I read that one already. The problem with having sex within the, your race is that I would be forced to be abstinence. There are only, there, there are only your inferior humans around here. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was so, so funny, funny. Funny. Who who said that? May would. <laughs> All right. Michael Rodney says, Haaretz from 2017. Were Jews ever really slaves in Egypt or is Passover a myth? Where is the real proof? Archaeological evidence, state records, and primary sources. We got the Bible as a history book. And, you know, so 
what can I say? I'm not a scholar in, in any of that kind of stuff, but I just say what we learn, right? Free speech is not false speech. I agree with Bridge MCP. And Michael Rodney says, the reality is that there is no evidence whatsoever that the Jews ever were enslaved in Egypt. I think I read that one already. All right. Okay. Let's go to the, what, what time is it? Let's go ahead and do the second video. This one is the one that I love. It's about, um, it's about, well, you, you'll see what it's about. Republicans constantly talk about being constitutionalist. They always want to follow the constitution. And you know what? I can't argue with that. The reality is, after the January 6th attempted coup, what the, the panel report has shown is that there was support not only external, but internal to the Congress. So there are 140-something Congress people and senators that voted to support the coup by not accepting the election. They, even after the insurrection, even after we had people killed, even after they invaded the Capitol, there were, there were Republicans who came into the House and Senate and voted to overthrow the election. That's a fact that we can all see. Now, the reality is, None of those Congress people who were re-elected into Congress should be allowed to serve. And that is a constitutional issue. If we look at the 14th Amendment, Section 3, reads as follows. No person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elector or president and vice president or hold any office, civil or military, under the United States or under any state who haven't previously taken an oath as member of Congress or as an officer of the United States or as a member of any state legislature or as an executive or judicial officer of any state to support the Constitution of the United States shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. But Congress may, by a vote of two-thirds of each house, remove such disability. In other words, the Constitution says, if you supported if you uh, provided comfort to those who attempted to overthrow the government, those insurrectionists, you are automatically out of Congress. And the only way that you can get back into Congress is if and only if two thirds, two thirds of the Congress says it's OK. Therefore, there are 121 or so that were reelected into Congress. They have no right to serve. And it's something that we need to look into right now. And Michael Moore, Michael Moore uh, said it best. I want you to listen to this and then we'll take it on the other side. As we start with the committee's recommendation to bar Trump from office, we're doing so because you've also been calling for much, much bigger action relative to the more than 100 senators and House members who voted to overturn the election on January 6th, uh, 2021. And by the way, who will be sworn in again to Congress in a couple of weeks? You still feel that way? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah. what has just bothered me now for the better part of the last two years, now obviously all of what Trump did, it's, he's now been called out not only as the instigator. It's not just about what he said from the podium in the park there, uh, sending everybody down to the Capitol. But, but the report shows very clearly this was a plot that was hatched before the election. They were planning this chaos and this assault beforehand. Um, he wanted to, the, the end game for him. This is before the election was to be able to declare martial law, uh, whether he won or lost, so that he could would then stay in the White House. And he had he has a historical precedent for that as a New Yorker, because if anybody anybody was here on 9-11 back in 2001, 
that was election day. And they had to close the polls by 10 a.m. They closed all the polls and canceled the election. And and that election, um, you, you might be better remembering this, wasn't held for a number of months. And it was decided that Giuliani could continue as mayor, even though he was not legally mayor. And I think Trump living here and, and seeing how, wow, people actually went along with that and were OK with it. And there was no election for many months uh, and there was no new mayor. And so the old mayor stayed in office. The, this he this was his plan. When you read this report, his plan was to stay in office if necessary by martial law and, and that he would have to declare because there was going to be this huge riot that he was instigating and his people were instigating. Incredible plot, uh, uh, a real coup attempt. And I think that, uh, but my, to your question, I'm sorry, it took so long to say that, that um, the, the, the 147 Republicans who later that night, after they got the Capitol back in their hands, and we're going to continue on with certifying the election, 147 Republican members of the House and senators voted, voted to overthrow the election, to overturn it, to not certify Joe Biden yeah. as the duly elected president of the United States. They went and voted. They put themselves on the record and said, no, no, we are going to do what these uh, insurgents wanted earlier in the day. The ones who were, are resulted in the deaths of Capitol Police officers and others, many injured. Uh, we're going to now give them what they want and we're going to do it by a vote. No blood or just a vote. But the vote, the vote violated the Constitution of the United States. Section three, three of uh, the 14th Amendment says if you participate in any way, in any kind of insurrection, rebellion, supporting one or even just giving, quote, from the Constitution, quote, aid and comfort to those who are rebelling. You are not allowed ever again in your life to sit in any public office, whether that is Congress, whether that's the White House. And in fact, it goes to all the, the whole thing takes it all the way down. And there's been many court cases on this over the years. You can't even run for county commissioner. You can't run for dog catcher if you participated in giving aid and comfort to the rebellion. That's what those 147 Republicans did. And then they, they can say, well, that was our right. And we were elected. We can vote. Yeah. Well, back in the Civil War, those who voted to secede from the Union and then went from being members of our Congress to the Confederate Congress and voted for the next four years to to commit treason and terrorism and resulting in the deaths of nearly 800,000 Americans. They were the none of they all tried to get back after the war was over. They all tried to get back into the real Congress, the U.S. Congress. And they had to pass this amendment mainly to stop them and say, you you can never serve in office again anywhere. We need to enact this. We need to invoke the Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And and I put up a, a big a, a list of all the pictures of those of those who did it that night and then got reelected last month. So they, they're being returned. Oh, there it yep. is. Yes. There so it is, yeah. and that's what they are. They're traitors. They uh, they attempted a coup. And these these are the one hundred and I think one hundred and twenty one who actually got reelected and are going to yep. take an oath of office a week from a this uh, next Tuesday. The same oath they violated when they voted to support the insurgency and the rioting and, and give the rioters what they wanted in that vote that night, six hours later that night and said, no, we're, we vote to overthrow the government, the government elected government of Joe Biden as the president. We're voting to make sure he never enters the White House after seven million plus Americans by a, a, a vote margin of seven million. He defeated uh, Donald Trump. And no, I just think um, if we care about this country, I don't want January 3rd, the day they're going to take their oath of office. I don't want that mm -hmm. to go by without somebody saying something. Uh, there's petitions online. Uh, people need to contact their members of Congress. Somebody stand up and say, you know, yeah, we're all here today. It's the 118th, the new Congress. But you, you 121, 
who did this on January 6th, who provided aid and comfort to the insurgency, to the, to the rebellion. Um, uh, I, in my conscience, cannot support that traitorous act that you committed. I don't think it could have been said any better. So if we really wanted to follow the Constitution, as all of us want to, as Republicans like to hammer in our heads that we should be following the Constitution, then every single person who voted to support the insurrection by voting to overturn the election, not to accept the election, they should not hold not federal office, not state office, not local office, according to Section 3 of Amendment 14 of the Constitution of the United States. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to... Uh, and that, that is a fact. They should not be allowed to do that. Egberto, when the Jews were there, so were the Palestinians, hence why it was called Palestine. Yep, like, that's it. But right now, you know, we have sort of a... Well, I won't go there. Uh, Marion Downey says there are people looking to rewrite our now. They choose calling for constitutional convention. I was a part of the 28th Amendment, uh, or rather the move to amend, uh, who was trying to create the 28th Amendment. Money is not speech. And uh, and uh, money is not speech. And uh, what's the other one? Money is not speech. And corporations are not people. And the thing about it is, a lot of folks wanted to do the rewrite of the Constitution altogether, and there are several groups that are talking about the Constitutional Convention. I think unless we have a lot more education first, that is something we probably, in my humble opinion, should refrain from. I think the, cap the, 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 it's a, the, the Constitution is a, capitalist, is a capital document, but for now, we need people to be more educated on, on what... what uh, this stuff is all together before we really turn it into a, uh, you get the point, what, what the Koch brothers would love to do, why they're big supporters of that group. All right, the important thing to understand about constitutional language is the shall and the must. Yep, yep. Alison Waters says, First Amendment's freedom of speech explanation is as follows. Alistair Water 200 character limit on YouTube. Alistair Waters guarantee the right to say what you want without government punishment. True. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Daniel Ledo say, yes, remove elected members of Congress that won't bring us closer to civil war. Again, we just want to be constitutional, right? You guys love the Constitution. They followed the letter of the law of the Constitution, which dictates their removal. You know, if we want to follow it. Uh, let's see what we got here. And Michael Rodney says, Daniel, keeping those who participated in an insurrection within government would, would bring civil war faster than removing them from office. True. Tom C. A Limerick. George Santos claims he's Jewish, loves bagels, niche, and Yiddish. Says he's not a fraud, not a liar. Just a GOP rep with pants on fire from a red district that was once bluish. I love your limericks, Tom. Tom, uh, have you been putting this stuff on, on our website yet? Or do you need some help? Let me know. Uh, let's see. Michael Rundin says, uh, it's a coffee paste. Starting to rain here, says Maywood. Egberto, Lee Grant says, Egberto's elitist view. The people are too stupid for a constitutional convention. No, that's not what I said. I said, an educated people, uh, uh, educa not being educated and stupid are not the same thing. All right? Um, one of the reasons you don't see me saying we need to have a democracy in every part of the world, and let me do a quick explanation on this. It's not elitist, this part at all. Um, if we have a democracy of people who don't understand, let's say, certain types of farming, and we have 100 bushels of corn, and we have hungry people, and everybody wants to be satisfied. And we said, all right, we can only feed with 99 bushels. The other bushel has to be stored away for planting next season. There are those who would, because of maybe not being educated or, again, like I said, not being sufficiently educated, 
that would say, but I'm still a little bit hungry. I want more and we have more. You say no. And there may be, let's say that most of the population feels that way. A, a absolute democracy in that regard, without an educated population, would say, okay, let's just go ahead and use up all the food. And then we all die afterwards. But an educated people would say, well, we have to keep the rest of the plant for the next crop so that we can replenish ourselves. That's the difference, Lee Grant. There's nothing elitist about what I was saying. There are certain parts of the world who don't understand this particular concept of government, governance, democracy. One of the reasons the Powell memo came out was to make more Americans less intelligent, to make Americans ignorant. Because an ignorant America would be is controllable like we have many people controllable now by the plutocracy. And that's what I'm talking about. They, they don't understand that. Why am I working while there's a guy at the pool just collecting money on dividends? And I'm doing the work and he's saying his money is working for him. No, I am working for him. Why is it that uh, I create the inventions and Bill Gates make the profit from it or Jeff Bezos make the profit from my intellect, the invention I created? Why is Oprah a billionaire using a microphone that was created by somebody? The airwaves at Fermi, uh, not Fermi, um, uh, Marconi uh, put the, the thing in the air. Why is, are all these people able to maximize their profit on the work of others without a lot of it going back into the commons called taxes, a high tax level after a certain amount of money? That is, those are the things that we have to think about. Bridge MCP says, Michael Rudden and Lee bring on constitutional convention. We can see the nation take a progressive turn. Get big money, corrupt out of politics, restore republic from plutocracy. It has become, or we can go progressive, or, or we can go progressive as some conservatives seem to want. Regressive, regressive, as some conservatives want. That's a thought. Okay, I'm at 350. I got one more video to show you. And let's see, which one is it? This is the last video. Yeah, let me go ahead and show this one. Come on in, Ray. Hey, brother Egberto. Hermano Hermano. Ray, talk to me. Como estas? Yeah, man, I had something on my mind. I'm hoping I don't take you into the weeds, but I only have a a minute to talk. Okay, go ahead. what What I wanted to give you is the magic school bus theory that I have. Okay. Miss Frizzle had a magic school bus. She was a teacher, mm-hmm. and she could take her children on field trips. And I just say that to say Miss Frizzle always had one specific thing. She said, take chances, get messy, and make mistakes. And what this pandemic had taught me is that there are some of us in life who kind of get to navigate like they're on that magic school bus, mm-hmm. but then there are some of us who don't have the privilege of being able to take chances, get messy, and make mistakes, which a lot of them were made. You know, that is a prescient statement. And, you know, the first time you talk about the opportunity to make a mistake, right? Uh, It reminded me of football coaches that aren't white. There's a skit that was put out by, uh, I don't remember the name of the comedian. Uh, And he said he moved into a neighborhood with dentists and doctors and lawyers, etc. And he said, you know, um, I just want the opportunity to be able to fail and not lose my life for having a failure. Let's look at the NFL as an example, but we can look at it in, in the medical fields and everywhere else. And I could tell you a story that occurred to me that I'm writing about in, in the books that I've written as being a person of color in, ingen- in the engineering field. But um, it goes like we're... Um, a coach, uh, it, 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 a lot of times if you have a person of color who's a coach, and I notice I'm not just saying black coach, just person of color is a coach, they get, they get one chance to succeed. And if they immediately fail, they don't get any other chances. And what, what this comedian, Chris Rock, was trying to say is, I want the opportunity to fail and not have the stresses to know that if I fail this one time, uh, you know, it's over for me. Uh, you know, when I was, I never forgot when I worked for a particular company in this city, 
um, I came in and the four of the five products that company released was a product, products that I wrote in PLM and assembly and all of that. And we wrote operating systems and all of that for them. And, and I mean, it was great. Uh, we did some projects for Transco that was to take uh, a year, did it in a month. That kind of a thing is the kind of performance I'm talking about. And I remember one time, every time you create a product, you have to send it to QA, quality assurance, right? And that's the purpose of quality assurance, to find any bugs that you may have in your software that runs the equipment. And it turned out that my, before my wife was my wife, uh, we worked at the same company. And um, uh, she was a secretary downstairs. I was upstairs in, in engineering and she called sort of in a panic because of all the whisper rumors she was hearing on the background. And it turned out that when my thing, this particular product went to QA, there was one bug that I had in the software that gave the wrong results, right? And which is what they're supposed to do, catch whatever bugs that the software engineer right. did. But instead of me finding out from QA that I, there was a bug in the particular software, there was a whispering campaign going over. Guess who had a bug in the software? Like, like bugs weren't ever found before, right? Guess who had bugs in the software? And, and the rumor mail got to my wife and she called up and it's like, hey, what happened? I, had, I didn't have a clue what was going on, but it was like the first failure that I had at the company was a humongous issue. Right. Something that was, right. a, it was, for, was a minor if then else kind of a deal that I needed to change in the application. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form. I still remember that particular issue at that company that I won't name. Uh, but anyhow, uh, uh, let's see. Abuelo 4T says, Que bueno haber, oh, oh no, first he says, Abuelo 4T says, La de redistribución de la riqueza es lo que necesitamos hacer. In other words, he says, what we need to do is have the redistribution of wealth. And he's absolutely correct. And let me tell you what we have to do, do first, uh, Abuelito. We have to first figure out. Tenemos que ver primeramente that uh, we have to ask or we have to teach people that the wealth that people are got, la riqueza con que, que las personas recibieron, no era riqueza que ellos que trabajaron por esa riqueza. They didn't work for that richness, for that wealth. They didn't earn that wealth. What they really did was dependent on the work, the worth, and the intellect. Ellos dependieron del trabajo, lo que nosotros merecemos, y también el intelecto de otras personas. That is how they reaped the wealth that they had. Es imperativo que enseñamos eso a la gente. It's imperative that we teach that to people. Because what happens is it's natural to think, well, if that person has a billion dollars and we increase taxes to 90%, somehow we're taking away something that person earned. Si, si, él, si es una persona que, que tiene un billón de dólares, que si lo quitamos por el medio de los impuestos, que eso significa que estamos robando a esa persona. Eso no es cierto, porque la verdad es que él no trabajó por ese dinero. Otros trabajaron por ese dinero. The reality is we're not stealing his money, his wealth, because we earned that wealth for her or him. What we have to start looking at is balance. We have issues within our economic system that allows some to make a, a, a humongous amount onto others. And that is what we must solve. Espero que entendiste lo que estoy diciendo, Abuelo 4T. Así, di, di, dígame, Abuelo 4T, si me entendiste. All right. A eso me refiero, no a, a quitarle para que las empresas no evaden impuestos. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, so I hope you understood what I meant, uh, Abuelo Forti. Uh, let's see. If you're talking Spanish, I'm going to start talking Gaelic. All right. I, I want to learn Gaelic. I, I remember you told me a few words in Gaelic the last time we spoke over, I think it was Zoom or something like that. Anyhow, folks, 
We are nearing the end of the program. I gave you four videos today. Let me know. Uh, and I'll break out my Deutsch. In other words, you're German, you mean? Or really Dutch? Because you put Deutsch. So I think that's German, right? Dutch is not the same. Uh, Abuelo Cuatro T. You said sorry. Uh, sorry for what, Abuelo? Uh, I don't know what you... De que, estás, de, de, de que me estás pidiendo perdón? No, I don't think you said anything wrong. Abuelo for T. All right, let's see what else we got. Uh, anybody else? What, what other languages are spoken here? We got German. We got Deutsch. Well, Deutsch is German. We also have Dutch. Uh, we also have Spanish. I need to brush up on my Spanish, though, because I was noticing as I was speaking that there are certain words por escribir en español. Oh, no importa. Si eso lo que entiende, lo que yo, yo soy bilingüe. Así que si, no, si es mejor hablar en español, no hay problema conmigo. Es un país libre. It's a free country. Anyhow, um, let's see what else we got. We got uh, one, one minute left to go. Anybody throws a message? I need Zoom for ASL. ASL. Uh, what, you, what do you mean? What is ASL again now? You have to help me out there, Alistair. Help me out there. Help me out there. We're coming to the end of the program. Is there anything anybody wants to ask before I go? But I have one message. I have one message, okay? And it goes like this. Tomorrow, I am not sure. I may be Etzle. Never heard of it. Tomorrow and the, the, the rest of the week, meaning Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I may record the show. I probably will still be in the chat sometimes and sometimes not. Because I'm working on wanting to bring in 2023 with, uh, with some more optimizations. I have to optimize how things are done. It's only me still. So I have a lot of optimizations that I need to do to improve my performance because it's, it's killing me. So not killing, you know what I mean. It, it's just a lot of work. So I, I'll be spending some time. I'm going to try to work on some shows tonight to put out, you know, put it out there. Please come and support the program. Oh, I forgot to do my ask. I'm going to go one minute over. Ah, que, que barbaro. Hold one second. Let me do that. Let me get my ask. Please, folks, <coughs> please support the program. And how do you support the program? Our all-encompassing support, <coughs> our all-encompassing support, oh, Pig Latin, I got you, guy. Uh, you can go to politicsdoneright.com slash support. Politicsdoneright.com slash support. Alternatively, if you want to become a patron, which we need a lot of patrons, please consider supporting us on Patreon by going to politicsdoneright.com slash patron. Patron is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Politicsdoneright.com slash patron. You can click the join button on YouTube to become a member on YouTube. We need a lot of members on YouTube as well. Uh, support us on PayPal. You can give us a one-time support or if you want to do a monthly support on PayPal. But uh, to tell you, we are far behind. I'm going to be sending out another ask by email today as well. And you can go to our store at politicsandright.com slash store, politicsandright.com slash store. And don't forget to get our books at politicsandright.com slash books. I thank you so kindly. I'll be putting out again uh, some, I, I'll probably be doing the show by tape. I'll try to get in, in into the screen, but please support the program best you can. Lee Grant says, I wonder if the new progressive constitution would outlaw evangelical Christians. We could not possibly do that. That's not a progressive tenet at all, brother. We could not possibly do that. I, I, I think uh, the evangelical leadership is a fraud, but we would never, ever do that. My name is Egberto. Willies, this is Politics Done Right, and you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Oh! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.